once an action potential begins, it cannot be stopped. An action potential propagates down the membrane of an axon. The refractory period creates a single discrete impulse that travels along the axon in one direction only. So it starts going and it can't go backward. The size and shape of an action potential also remain constant along the axon. So it's an all or, all or none law that if an action potential begins, it doesn't really matter how large the stimulation was to begin it. Once, once the action potential begins, it is one signal that is in the same shape regardless. This is basically how an, how an uh, action potential would propagate down an axon. So an action potential begins, you have the stimulation here, and what this, this, the inside of the cell is going to reach a point of negative 50 millivolts that's going to cause the sodium channels to open. When these sodium channels open, then the cell becomes more positive. When the cell is starting to become more positive, then a nearby sodium channel, for example down here, is going to activate. So in this way, one will open, it becomes positive, sort of the next one opens, and the next one opens, and then it travels down. So after the cell becomes, after this section of the axon becomes more positive, then you have the voltage-gated potassium channels that open. And this helps the uh, cell, <coughs> excuse me, this helps this proportion of the axon return to uh, its negative resting potential. So in this way, this uh, electrical information or this electrical charge it travels as a wave down the length of the axon. It's much like a domino effect, okay? That again, it's all in one direction. It can only go this way. And when one starts to fall, then it has a sort of neighboring effect. The speed of a nerve impulse, or the speed of which the action potential travels down an axon, uh, differs as a function of whether the axon is unmyelinated or whether it's myelinated. When you have an unmyelinated axon, a series of action potentials travel down the axon. And again, you can see this here, this sodium channel opens, it becomes more positive, then again a neighboring channel would open, it would become more positive, and then this chain of sodium channels opening down the axon would occur. In a myelinated axon, however, the axon is insulated and it has small breaks between insulation. These small breaks are called nodes of Ranover. And what this does, is this enables saltatory conduction. So then what you have in a myelinated axon is basically a combination of this action potential wave that is, travels down much slower and the saltatory conduction that's very much like you would have the rapid transmission of electrical activity through a conductor. So the myelin acts like a conductor and it transfers the positive uh, charge from one part of the axon down to the next node of Ranover. And it basically looks like this. So you have the sodium channels open, this increases its positivity, the potassium channels open, and this positive uh, charge right here is going to automatically jump through conduction. This is myelin right here. This myelin is going to conduct that positivity to the next break, which is a node of Ranover. And then this positive charge is going to open up the sodium channels. And again, it's going to travel down as a conductor into this next section here. So it'll look like these little blips across time. And so what this does is this combines this electrical wave with the speed of electrical conduction. So myelinated axons are much, much faster than unmyelinated axons. And the speed is really, really important. Myelinated axons are particularly important uh, for, peripheral, for your peripheral nervous system in terms of the speed of your muscles. And the myelin 
in your central nervous system and your peripheral nervous system are different. So there are different types of glial cells that make the myelin in your central nervous system uh, versus the myelin in your peripheral nervous system. To give you an example of the differences between myelin in the central nervous system and, central ner and in the peripheral nervous system, there are some forms of lateral sclerosis or what Stephen Hawking has. Um, he has a very severe early onset form and uh, his is called amotropic lateral sclerosis and commonly known as motor neuron disease. And so this would result in the degeneration of his myelin in all of his uh, motor neurons. So all of his cognitive functioning is still good, but then the myelin is reduced in his motor neurons. And so if it's unmyelinated, it travels so slowly that it cannot, the information cannot be used effectively to stimulate movement. So now I'm going to present you with a brief video that shows how an action potential would begin and flow down the length of an axon. We have looked at the resting potential in a neuron that is not transmitting nerve signals. What happens when the cell is stimulated? A stimulus changes the permeability of the cell membrane to sodium and potassium ions. This alters the distribution of charge in the cell body, and if the change is great enough, it triggers a signal, called an action potential, that moves down the axon. How does the action potential move along the axon? Voltage-gated channels in the membrane open and close depending on voltage changes across the membrane. When no nerve signals are being transmitted, these channels are closed. A stimulus causes voltage-gated sodium channels to open, and sodium ions rush into the cell. The cell becomes positive on the inside and negative on the outside. Very quickly, the sodium channels close, while voltage-gated potassium channels open, allowing potassium ions to rapidly diffuse out. The cell returns to being positive on the outside and negative on the inside, and the potassium channels close. Meanwhile, the sodium ions inside the cell have diffused to adjacent areas, causing a slight change in the polarity of the membrane ahead of the action potential. This change in polarity causes the voltage-gated sodium channels along this part of the membrane to open. Again, sodium ions rush in and the action potential spreads to the adjacent part of the neuron. In this way, the action potential travels down the neuron like a wave, in the wake of the action potential, potassium leaves the cell, restoring the negative charge inside the neuron. Meanwhile, the sodium-potassium pump has been shuttling sodium ions out and potassium ions in, re-establishing the resting potential distribution of sodium and potassium ions. Let's look at another action potential as it moves along the membrane. This time we will measure the voltage changes that occur in one spot along the membrane. A slight change in polarity causes the voltage-gated sodium channels to open. Sodium ions rush in, causing a reversal in membrane polarity. Sodium channels close and potassium channels open. As potassium ions rush out, the membrane returns to being negative on the inside. The sodium-potassium pump then restores the balance of ions present at resting potential. 